chance it. I don't blame you. All right, so we are live on Facebook. Good morning, everybody. I can never get my lighting just right. I'm either too glowy or too, or not, or whatever. But we're going to make it work today. <laughs> I'm just it's on the hard. floor of my bedroom with this lovely color behind me. <laughs> we got the same wall. <laughs> All right, so we have a few moments before we go on air, as everyone can see. Ms. Brandy Hodge is from the library, the Craker County Public, Jonesboro Public Library is with me. Um, it's been a while since we've been on. Um, and unfor shoot. unfortunately, there's not a lot been going on because we've all been snowed in, but we're yeah. going to talk about some databases and things that we don't, because we always kind of throw them in at the end of the show. So. And they're important. So we're going to give them a little more time on today. So, um, because there's always, there's so many wonderful things to do with the library and so many resources. So here we go. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday to you. Happy chilly Friday. I know most people are snowed in right now. So what better thing to do than listen to the radio and listen to uh, me and Ms. Brandy Hodges uh, talk about some databases and other things that's happening at the Jones, the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. They're more than just about books. You know, there are a lot of resources and some of them you can access from home. So, you know, if you're on your computer now, you got a notebook, let's take notes. Let's get it going. So, all right, Ms. Brandy, how have you been? How are you doing with this being snowed in? Um, well, the library closed on Wednesday of last week. We were closed Wednesday. We reopened on Saturday and then we've been closed all this week. So I've been um, at home, literally stuck um, and I, with four fur babies. So um, <laughs> it's it's been a long week. <laughs> oh, I know wow. a lot of people out there probably miss the library and trust me when I say we do too. Yes. Because you all were just kind of getting your momentum back going. You had these different activities for the kids and tweens. And um, you were trying to roll out some virtual things. And, you know, people were able to kind of come in a little more use of computers and maybe get books and, you know, still distancing and safety measures in place. But, you know, it was kind of starting to feel like some kind of normal you know yeah and <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to it we we just had a a week or so of um not really having anything we could do but um it's we have a lot of programming we actually we have scheduled programming and so we have a video that um what dropped yesterday on youtube it was something okay. that we we try to pre-schedule everything two weeks out so when something like this happens you know we're ready for it. Um, okay. So we have a video that uh, released yesterday. Um, it is a DIY um, makeup tutorial um, on our oh. YouTube page. So that is um, just for search for the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library on YouTube. We have a lot of great videos on there. We have teen, tween, um, children, some adult videos posted on all of our social media platforms. So we post some specifically to YouTube, some to Facebook, um, just trying to cover our basis of where the people that those videos are intended for will most likely see them. Okay, so I'm going to put the YouTube uh, channel and post the link in the web in the Facebook live feed. So um, let's talk about well, okay, I think we talked about this a little bit before with Miss, um, oh, shoot, <laughs> um, from the teen library. Yes, um, so Miss Jolene, I have her calendar right here on my handy-dandy phone. She sends us um, the events that she plans on doing, and in March, she's going to do a bird feeder and birdhouse kit. Um, oh. She's collaborating with a local high school, and it will include um, platform bird feeder, paint, foam, paintbrush, and bird seed. She's also planning on doing a garden stepping stone kit um, that will have mosaic tiles, accents, a stone mold, and um, a stone mix and a foil mold. Um, so those are just a couple of the things that she has planned. Um, I know that um, Dr. Sousa's birthday is coming up the first week of March. And so we'll probably have something. Um, we always do every year. That was the last event we got to do last year okay. before the library closed. So we're coming back up on that year anniversary of COVID-19 in our area. So um, uh -huh. it's, it's, been a, it's been a long year. 
but we are doing um, the very best we can to um, to be relevant, to provide. Um, you'll notice um, if you follow the library Facebook page and our events calendar on our website, libraryinjonesboro.org, everything says virtual next to it because we're not going to be able to do in-person programming. For example, earlier this month, um, February has been very long, but <laughs> earlier this month, um, the first Saturday of the month, of February, we hold an annual winter genealogy event. Well, okay. we weren't able to do that. And so um, we are releasing, and I really need to try to get to the library before tomorrow because I'm supposed to release the Saturday video, um, but we are doing videos twice a week on Wednesday and Saturday um, that are information about genealogy. So you, you can't come to the library and do genealogy, um, mm -hmm. do a big genealogy event to learn how to get started. So we've done, what is genealogy? What is it? You know, how do you get started? What are the, what are the first steps? How COVID has changed things? Because normally you'd be able to come to the library and go back to the big genealogy area and pull stuff off the shelves. And you can't do that now. That area is closed off but you can request us to pull books for you and we will pull Ooh. them for you and you can look at them and then um, get what you need. You can also look at our microfilm machines. Um, also something really exciting for those, maybe we're stuck at home for a few more days. Um, Ancestry is a paid service, but if you go through the library website, go to libraryinjonesboro.org, click on oh, your reference. Cool. I'm sorry. Well, yes. I don't know if they can see it from this way, but um, pick, uh, so click on the reference tab or the research tab. Um, I can't see it. Um, it's on the um, third one over, click there and go down to. Um, you can even go down to databases and click on ancestry through there, or you can go to our genealogy page and click on ancestry there. You can't just go to the ancestry website and get on for free, but if you go okay. through the library website. Um, you can actually use Ancestry at home for free right now. Oh, okay. So again, go to libraries in Jonesboro, libraryinjonesboro.org. And when you get to the home page, this is what the home page looks like. And research is the third tab, the third word over on that top row. Click on research and you'll usually get a pull down menu <laughs> anyway it, this year is just not treating us right so anyway the research page will pop up um click on genealogy or go scroll down the page and so anywho there'll be some blue words that are actually links to other sources and so which one would people need to oh i see there's jonesboro sun deaths and obituaries index mm -hmm. um it says you can request a staff member to send you up to five obituaries per week. Wow. And we get the, those requests really often. Okay. I'm and pulling up our link. website too. And so then there's the links of the public library subscribes to several genealogy databases. Um, there are a lot of genealogy databases like Fold3 is military records. Okay. Um, so on that pull down menu, there's actually, if you can get the pull down menu to work, there's actually a tab for genealogy. But if you just click on research, you can click on genealogy. It's one of the highlighted blue words in the paragraph. Okay. And from there, that takes you right to the page where ancestry is accessible. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. So hopefully people can see this. So it says genealogy database. Yes, and so you and would so just click on Ancestry Library. Okay. And what's great about Ancestry is they've actually added a lot recently. That's what they were telling us when we had a meeting is Ancestry, as, as, as documents are becoming available, they're adding more things. And so one thing that is really interesting, especially like Fold3, as I mentioned, is military records, those those forms will include things like your family member's eye color and hair color and things that you may not have ever otherwise known. So it, it's, it's just really neat going, oh, well, I didn't know he had blue eyes or okay. brown hair. You know, it's just different things that we're learning about our family. 
Um, genealogy research is so interesting once you get started. I know when you hear it, you're like, eh, I don't know about that. That's how I was. Let but me ask you this. Yeah. Since, you know, we face this unfortunate snowstorm and due to people kind of not venturing out as much, have you all or will you extend the virtual um, library part? We actually have the the virtual library card is is it's a digital library card and it's pretty much part of our digital. repertoire now. Okay, so it, everyone can get a library card. You don't have to actually go in. Right. You can go right, to our so website libraryinjonesboro.org and there's a slide across the homepage that is get a digital library card and you fill out that form. Of course. Um, right now with us um, not being at the library, it will probably be a few days um, because we haven't had access to the system. Okay. And but I just speaking want, of, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I brought that up because in order to access these databases, you need yeah. your library card and it asks right. for your PIN, which is the last four digits of whatever phone number you use to register with. <laughs> Right, because um, we pay for a service to have these um, these opportunities, these databases, and so they are. We pay for the service for the people who have library cards, you know. So you have to have that. But you know, speaking of going to the library, which I haven't in a while, um, we are. I wanted to let people know that we're trying to open. Um, our parking lot is is co coded just like all of our parking lots are coded right now. Um, your street probably looks like our streets and so um we are working with the city and the county to see if we can get anything plowed but as the county judge told us yesterday they have over a thousand um, I'm, I'm gonna look at my my boss's uh, message real quick but over a thousand miles of roads that they have to clear and so wow. um the city we are talking to them to see if they might be able to plow our um, parking lot today and some of our spots but you know, we're trying to open, but just be patient with us. Um, watch our Facebook page today because we would like to be open by noon today, but there's no guarantee that we'll um, be able to get that done, that we'll be able to make that happen. So just uh, follow our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash ccjpl for Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library. That's where we post all of our updates. Um, but we are tentatively still planning on hosting the Friends of the Library um, general fiction sale this Sunday. It okay. is by appointment only. So if you weren't able to make an appointment before the snowstorms hit, because it so, was snowstorms, <laughs> if you weren't able to make an appointment, um, we will, um, we're going to try to be there on Saturday. And then Sunday, it's supposed to be warm enough that things should be melted off. So again, okay. Just follow our Facebook page, but if we are able to host the sale on Sunday, you can call us on Sunday and, and make an appointment. Okay. Now, I think we've talked about this before as well, but due to the state of conditions, um, do you feel that this is pushing the librarians to be more and more innovative and uh, creative when it comes to the content that they put out? Absolutely. So we're just trying to our best to provide um, information that you may not be able to get from other sources. So um, we are doing some fun and different things that maybe you don't associate with libraries. So we're doing, like I said, we did a makeup tutorial. Miss Jerrica and Miss Jolene um, and Miss AJ did a makeup tutorial um, that turns our teen librarian into Ursula from The Little Mermaid. It's beautiful. It's such pretty makeup that they did. So we're doing all sorts of different things to just stay relevant and be that resource that you come to to get, get some different things. For example, I have what adults are doing in March. They're going to do a take and make kit on how to make a fairy jar. Um, and we're, you know, our adult services department, along with our other departments, said they have done wonderful videos that show you step by step how to make something. And so they provide the all the supplies you need to make it, and then a roadmap, if you will, on how to do it. So they're also going to do a plant. We every year they celebrate Plant a Flower Day, so we'll have Plant a Flower Day take and make kits, um, and uh, they'll do some book reviews they've got planned and then they're doing a monthly genealogy so in 
the months are running together, January wow. or February, they did a, what unusual f- names do you have in your family? And so, oh, I mean, wow. I had an uncle Kermit, like that was his literal name. It wasn't a nickname. It was Kermit, like the frog. Oh my so, goodness. <laughs> we, we just shared um, ways to, you know, we're just, we're trying to be innovative, I guess I, I should say. Okay. First, I want to say good morning to Derek Coleman for checking in. To everyone else who's checking in, um, if you are looking for some ideas to keep you and the kids occupied and you know, just take a break from virtual learning, um, check out the library uh, and their multiple databases. Uh, we've been talking about the genealogy one. And then they also have, um, aside from that, there's some other databases as well, but also in conjunction, check out their YouTube channel, their Facebook pages, they're even on TikTok. So there's something for everybody. <laughs> there really is. All right. So uh, let's go to another database. So a great one. Um, if you, we have a lot of parents who are currently helping their kiddos with um, attending school because they're maybe they're doing virtual learning. Um, one of my favorite databases is actually the Testing and Education Reference Center. Um, if you go to research and click on databases okay. and go down to the bottom, you can search by um, subject or alphabet. I usually do alphabet because it's easiest um, to okay. get down. But it's all the way at the bottom um, under the T's. Um, but it has um, instructional videos, which I found really helpful. I'm a visual learner and I know other people can be as well. And so it really walks you through how to do a lot of different math problems, which I wish had been around when I was in school. Um, (laughs) But it's a great, um, it's a great um, tool to be able to use. It doesn't have a lot of things for elementary students, which I'm sorry about that, but it has a lot of things for high school, college. It even has um, things for people who are doing another career. For example, it's got... um, different practice tests for nursing students and people who want to go to law school and people who are studying for their real estate exam. It's just got a lot of different um, options. It even has the U.S. citizenship practice test. So it's got a wide range of um, testing opportunities um, and also like lessons. And it has some of the, the books, the study guides, for some of those um, different tests coming up that you can you can use the digital version. Okay. Okay, um, in the description it says, um, research, um, well, reliable test prep, college readiness and career development. Testing and Education Reference Center is a valuable online tool. Um, library patrons and students of all ages can use for standardized test preparation researching and selecting college and graduate schools and that's very interesting yeah um and find tuition finding tuition exist assistance and exploring career so that's really wonderful too so it's a kind of a one-stop shop if you may um and so it kind of i think well i can you can't get into any of these databases unless you have your library card number and a pin which is your last four digits last four digits of your phone number that you use to register. So make sure to get the library card first and then you can start exploring all these databases and what they have to offer. You know, another one is actually um, how to learn a different language. It's called Mango Languages. Um, And it's really great because it, like many of our databases, if you're using the database that helps you learn how to use Excel, or if you're using the database that helps you learn the languages, once you log in with your library card number and you start learning, when you log in again, it will pick up where you left off. So you don't have to start over from scratch. It will help you um, learn French or maybe your um, high school student or college student is um, taking a foreign language and they need just a little extra help. I know I did. So um, this is a great opportunity. I mean, I know this is silly, but you can even learn pirate, how to speak pirate in well, mango languages. If you if you're looking for something fun. Now I have a question because I've used this, I've actually logged in before, but now it's taking me to 
Well, when I put the page, it says Arkansas State Library Traveler Database Program. Like, yes, I need to change the organization. Well, no. Um, so a lot of the databases that we have are actually through the Arkansas State Library. Like they pay for the databases okay. for us to be able to use them and they provide them for libraries across the state. And so it actually is through the, that's a great question. I'm so glad you brought that up. It's actually okay. through the Arkansas Traveler um, system. So um, we don't have a subscription for Craighead County, but it is provided to us through the Arkansas State Library and we're glad to have them. And so for the login, it's asking for email and a password or username. So would someone need to create yes. an account? Basically? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I see there also are options for apps you can download. If you download the app, will you still have access? I believe so. For example, the new system that we are using at the library is called Atrium. And we haven't promoted it yet because we're still um, learning the new system. But okay. there's actually an app that you can download um, that is to go with the new system that we have that you check out books through. Um, and once we know more about that and are more familiar with it, we'll start um, promoting that resource. But um, you can always um, use the library website, the library online website and on your phone to look up books and other items. But there are a lot of different apps available for um, some of the different systems that we have. Um, I'm not familiar with all of them, but okay. um, it's just another resource um, for our patrons to be able to access um, these, these things. Okay, well, we're going to get ready to take a break off air, but we'll continue on Facebook Live. So, again, I'm Ms. Brandy Hodges from the Craig County Library. We'll be right back after these announcements. And I think I was talking over the, <laughs> talking over the, oh, oh gosh. Okay, and I so. will be right back. You'll see this pretty um, tan wall. I'm going to go check on a bunny. Okay. <laughs> so, again, for those of you watching, you can go to uh, libraries in Junk Room. And your first step, if you don't have a library card, is to get your virtual library card. So from the home tab, there's a little blue card at the top that says temporary digital, uh, I keep saying virtual, digital library card. Digital, um, virtual, it, it all um, <laughs> it kind of means the same thing. So um, I'm just so glad we're able to offer that because it really, um, for those who, um, maybe haven't been able to get to the library um, or maybe don't feel comfortable. Uh, I can tell you that our um, number of visitors comparatively to this time last year, it is down. Not as many people are going into, into businesses. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about the form a little bit. I've got it pulled up. That okay. form, it asks for your, your name, your phone, no, uh, or, I'm sorry, your name, your birth date, um, your patron branch, because we have um, nine locations. And so it will ask you, you know, actually um, there's uh, 10 locations on here because Bookmobile is one of the locations um, that we will have in the future because we have our beautiful Bookmobile. It's got its new home that was built um, this past year that it lives in, but we're just not able to take it out yet. But you would let mm -hmm. us know what your home library is, if it's Brooklyn or if it's um, Monette or Mark Tree, um, and then provide your address, um, your phone number, your email. Um, and then if there's any additional information um, that you would want us to consider for your request, um, because it is an application. It's the <laughs> library card. Uh, let me get back to um, my Zoom. The library card um, form, it is an application because library cards are available to those who live in our service area. So, okay. you know, you have to live in Craighead County or um, most of Poinsett County is covered um, by, um, by us. And so um, if you don't live in our ser service area, that's something that it would be, you would probably write in the to consider um, because we do a, a, a program called gateway cards where it, you oh. can live in a, 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 a certain counties and still qualify for a library card. It's a yeah. program I don't know a whole lot about, but once okay. we reopen, um, our circulation department can answer all of your questions. But um, 
it is a one card per family and you have limited checkouts with it. Okay. Awesome. So we're going to go back on air in about another minute. And as I'm looking at the home page, there's some things I want to ask about. Yes, ma'am. Um, some, you have like a scrolling display, I guess you're saying, um, across the, you know, on the home page. So mm-hmm. I want to uh, make sure we share that with everyone as far as, you know, your hours and appointment only options and you know some other things and there's something else that's kind of cool here it says cozy night in a crate so I wanted if you know anything about that (laughs) so I don't know if we still have any of those available that was our um adult um kit for the month it was it started being available earlier this month um but we weren't open for um we closed on I don't know what date it was uh, the last one let me pull up a calendar so we weren't open we haven't been open so the 10th the 9th was the last day we were open and then we were open on the 13th so theoretically there might still be some of these kits available and as you can see from the picture it comes with a mug a coloring book a stress ball and a sleep mask and so it's a real we call it a relaxation kit and so there might still be some of those available if we are able to open on um, Saturday, on, to, on you know, today, which I don't know, um, that's still up in the air, or Saturday, um, you could always call 935-5133 and just say, hey, are there any of the um, adult kits for February still available? And okay. if there are, we can get you signed up for it. All right. All right. So we're back for those listening on air. Sorry. I just brought you into the conversation. Uh, we were talking about some items that were on the, that were available. Not sure if they're still available. Um, there was an adult kit that was put together. It was a, called Cozy Night in a Crate. Um, so if you're interested, please contact the library to see if that's available. What else is available? Um, contact the teen library to see what, you know, kits are upcoming. They uh, Ms. Jolene always tries to put together something really cool for the kids to stay busy and um, do the children's library and does the children's library and also put together because I haven't had so we haven't had her on I had whoever that person is on yes, so, so there's a children's um, librarian they do um, some different kits um, for example in January they did a um, peg doll kit um and they try to do they did um valentine's kits and they they got those all handed out before the the winter storm hit um but they they have some different things planned um let me pull the calendar up really quick um but i i know this this month has been pretty interrupted by um mother nature so I'm not really, that's why I mentioned to you earlier, I'm kind of in a holding pattern. I don't know, you know, if we've been able to do some things, if some things are still on track, um, if some things are still available. I know teens had um, a bath bomb kit um, planned um, that they're going to be doing um, in the end of this month, um, but I'm not sure where the signups are on that. I don't know if there are still any of those kits available. Um, the best thing to do would be to call us at 935-5133 once we're able to reopen and just check on that kit. Um, and then we also do um, story time live on Facebook on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. And so if you have kiddos um, really of any age who, um, you know, you're, you're looking for a little bit of, of structure, or you're looking for a story time. Who doesn't love story time? Um, yeah. That is going to be every Tuesday morning at 10. We play it live. Um, and then the video is available on our YouTube and Facebook pages for you to watch if you are not available at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. Okay. So again, um, to stay in touch with what's, with what's happening at the library, especially online uh, for the virtual events uh check out their facebook page um and then don't forget to uh subscribe to their youtube channel there's some other fun things happening over there and then you can always go to library and jonesboro.org and there's a calendar of events um things maybe may be updated often so you might want to check back you know often Uh, we want to remind people your hours i'm seeing your new hours you do have study rooms where they're by appointment only. 
And then there's some other things. Um, it keeps scrolling. It says something about um, the adult uh, books and DVDs, but again, appointment only. So talk about those aspects. So I actually need to check those because some of those m- may be outdated. So we, okay. um, let me let me look really quick um, over here at them. So um, adult and DVD browsing, it does say no appointment necessary. So oh, um, no appointment. Well, we were by appointment only for a long time. So um, we are open. Um, generally, we are open um, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. We're open on Saturdays from 9 until 3. The weather has just put the pause button on those hours. So okay. um, for those who weren't with us earlier, um, we would love to be able to open today at noon but that's all dependent on if our str- our parking lot and street can be plowed. Um, so we're just um, kind of watching and waiting. So um, we will announce on our Facebook page, um, facebook.com slash ccjpl, if we are able to, um, to open today or open tomorrow. We are tentatively still planning on hosting a book sale. It is general fiction. Um, and that will tentatively be on Sunday because it's supposed to be up in the 40s or 40s or 50s. I am ready. <laughs> negative two, I think we had negative one or negative two earlier this week was not something I was friends with. Um, yeah, <laughs> but we are hopeful that we'll be able to host that sale on Saturday, Sunday. It is by appointment only. So if you weren't able to make an appointment before we close due to the um, winter weather, you can call Sunday um, and and make an appointment. So we'll just, again, all that information will be put up on our social media pages. So please, please follow us there to get all of the most up-to-date updates. <laughs> okay. Now what I am seeing uh, today, February 19th, is D, which is Dungeons and Dragons, on Discord. Oh, and it says virtual program. So Discord has a video. Um, I just became familiar with Discord maybe a month ago. Um, it has a, a video option. <laughs> well, what it is is um, I don't know if it's a video option or um, how it works exactly, but um, Bianca from our adult services department hosts that event every Friday so they alternate week to week whether they're playing a um, ongoing game or if they're playing you know a a one night game and so it's every other week you can either join in on the continuous game or join just a nightly a game and that's held every Friday night Um, and you know the the cool thing about um doing something like that virtual is it can take place you know rain or shine snow or or dry you know it doesn't matter um they can still do that but it's it's at seven o'clock um on discord and if you go to our um you and i both are showing our screens but if you go here to our um our our, uh, website library in jonesboro.org click on the events tab in the middle of the page um, the hyperlink is actually right there that you can click and join our our Discord page. Okay. All right. Then also, I think you just mentioned this um, Teen Hub Take and Make. Well, that that would have been an in person. No, that the Take and a- Make kits they would have had to come to the library and get yeah. them. Those are usually by registration only. Um, I say registration only, not really. But a lot of the kids, um, people will register for them. And by the time the kids are available, we don't have any kids left. And so um, they are, you can pre-register for them. Not really right now because no one's there to answer the phones. Um, but those kids um, will be available. And so if you have a teen, um, when we're open again, um, please, please give us a call. 935-5133 and check and see if any of those kids are available. Because it sounds so fun. They are... Um, actually um, can open up what is what all is included in them because Miss Jolene gives us all the information. So this kit includes Epsom salt, baking soda, citric acid, fragrance, a bath bomb mold, and dried rose petals. Ooh. And so what I love about programs that you'll get through the library, you're not just going to get a kit and pieces to make one thing. 
you're going to get a kit and pieces to make one thing, but you're going to have the knowledge of how to do it again. Okay. That, that's what we're there for. That's and another thing <laughs> about the library is not only do we provide, say, a kit, but then we're also going to have books in our collection that are about that. So okay. I'm sure we have books in our collection on bath bombs and how to make your own soap and things like that. Um, and then for like our adult kit, um, we have the coloring book kit and the cozy. And you can learn other things in our nonfiction section about how to make some of those things at home. I know I've checked out books that have how to make your own sleep mask, how to sew your sleep mask, um, how to um, use markers to create um, your own coffee mugs. So wow. not only do we want to provide um, the information and the supplies for you to make something, but we want to, um, there's a phrase that I was taught when I first started working there is each one teach one. So I learned something and then I show you how to do it. And then you know how to do it and you show someone else how to do it. And okay. that's how we continue to be a community of learners. And, you know, a lot of these um, packets that you all put together, these kids, um, as you said, the kids are learning and probably their families as well, the parents, they're learning how to make something that they can continue on. These would be great gift ideas, you know, somewhere down the line. Absolutely. They can now customize a scent or whatever color for, you know, somebody special. So, again, this is one of these fun educational things <laughs> that Absolutely. you all are doing. Um, So I hope that, you know, it continues on. The kids, you know, really gravitate. They take advantage of all of these projects that you all have to offer them and we have to give a shout out to the sponsor, whoever your sponsors are, that helps, you know, cover the cost of these kits, you know? Well, we, each of our departments has budgets. Okay. And so we, um, we are using um, our, these are things that we would have done anyway. We would have normally planned to do an activity. And so we're just using the money from the budget that we would have already been using on something else um, to provide, you um, that um that service um but i do want to talk a little bit about something that people haven't really been able to see because we haven't been open but um we have had art so as soon as we're able to reopen anyone who could come by the library and i'll post pictures on our facebook page as well but we have um mr randy brown he has some beautiful art that is on display in the library it is um a lot of mixed medium um, he does a lot of painting on glass. That's beautiful. He, oh. um, he said he, um, in the interview I, I, I did with him that he, um, had not done art before and just was doodling, started doodling and then would go back and finish his doodles and turn them into sketches. And then has just, you know, met, mixed different types of, um, of paint and even nail polish he uses nail polish on some of his his glass art and that adds just it adds depth and texture and it's beautiful we also have um, a display on loan from the Hemingway Pfeiffer Museum in uh, Piggott it is um, a three panel display about Pauline Pfeiffer who was the second wife of um, author Ernest Hemingway okay. and he actually spent some time they met in Paris and then um, where she was an editor for Vogue. Um, oh. And then they um, lived in Piggott for a while. And there's a barn there on the property that he actually wrote one of his books in. So it's a wonderful <laughs> museum. Um, it's got a lot of history, not only about Ernest Hemingway, but about the Pfeiffer family who was um, a pretty big deal um in clay county so um it's a three panel display where you can learn a lot about um a pauline she was a fashion editor in paris i mean how cool is that so she was this was you know a, a time where women didn't have a lot of power you know and so to um have traveled from arkansas and you know um making a name for herself like that um, was, it, it was really, um, it's an amazing story to um, read that three panel. So it's hanging on um, 
on the wall of the library between the DVDs and the teen area. So <laughs> if you happen to stop by the library, we also have um, a collection of books um, on display that you can check out um, about um, the, they're mainly about Ernest Hemingway because that's okay. who we have books on. So, okay. <laughs> but that's just, those are just some of the other things we um, usually have done art all the time, but we had a, a pause in taking artists but we've started that back up and it's it's I love having artists at the library because you get to see the talent that lives in your area yes I want to uh, also shout out um you know with this being Black History Month you all do such a wonderful job at um well for each holiday uh, but you also have a display sometimes or you have books that you highlight and I know Miss Jolene shut off a book a little while ago yeah, I, called March I to, and I need to find that book um get in as many people's hands as possible but um we just want to give you all a shout out for you know being diverse in that manner that you try to cater to every ethnic group that is represented in our community you know um again every holiday every special occasion you all highlight something and whenever we call you out to an event you bring something relative, related to that event, no matter what event you go to. So thank you for that. Um, so we want people to continue to support the library because you support the community in which you serve. You know, We appreciate that. Um, our circulation department has put together an amazing display um, for Black History Month. It includes DVDs and it has some books. Yeah. It has some, um, just some great um, different types of things um and I know that we we've been talking about our favorite books um but one of my favorite books I read last year was um Becoming by Michelle Obama I don't know if you've read that one but it. oh be ready to want to be her best friend it's I think that we could be best friends you know <laughs> um it's it's amazing and there are so many books by so many diverse authors that we have in our collection. So our circulation department has put together a beautiful, a beautiful display and you can take stuff off of it. We encourage you, you know, okay. take something out off of that display. But Miss um, Trinity and our, our children's library has anyone out there, please go to our Facebook page, scroll down a little bit. Miss Trinity has, she is an amazing artist and she has, um, put together some posters um, to celebrate Black History Month that are, I mean, I can't even say, I can't even come with a, a, with the right word for them. They are so amazing. And then uh, Miss Jerrica also helped create some just really awesome posters to celebrate. And so that's also part of the celebration is, is showing our appreciation and um, showcasing art done by the the people who work there at the library that's awesome that's awesome so i hope to see more um of all of the librarians talents put on display you know in the upcoming months and um you know just it's great to support local people as well like we have a lot of rich history a, a lot of rich culture right here in our own backyard and is we need to celebrate and highlight our own people. Uh, we don't have to look too far to right. find some wonderful things to put on display. But um, again, you know, just thank you to the library for all that you all do. Like with the Ernest Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway display, you know, he was a very um, renowned, world-renowned, you know, author, poet, and things like that. So. Um, the kids need, not just kids, adults. I bet there's some adults who have no clue <laughs> uh, at the extent of his career and who he was married to and what ties they have to Arkansas. I didn't know the ties they had to Arkansas until now. So that's news to me now. It makes me want to go do some more research and, you know, look that up. So and one of the books that's on display is actually a book one of our book clubs read a few years ago. Um, and it's called The Paris Wife. And it was about his first wife, Hadley, um, who he had been married to when he met Pauline and oh. so um, you know it's it's a it's a fictionalized version of her life we also have a book in our collection about the Pfeiffer family because the Hemingway Pfeiffer Museum is actually a um, heritage project 
through Arkansas mm-hmm. State University. And so there's a book um, that we have in our collection by, um, I believe, Dr. Ruth Hawkins. Okay. Um, that is about the Pfeiffer family and the, the um, about them. I can't think of words today. <laughs> um, but that's just, it, it's, a, it's a display we have right now. We also have um, talking, speaking of displays, we have a display in our children's library as well for Black History Month that has um, both um, storybooks as well as um, nonfiction books. So you can, you can have some, um, I, I, we're just an educational resource. And so we always are saying, hey, here's something cool. You can learn something. So we always take those opportunities. All righty. All right. So again, go to librarynjonesboro.org. Look for, you know, there's all kinds of tabs. There's departments, research, e-media. We don't we talk about that quite that much. Um, again, there's databases. Uh, you click on research. You can scroll down, look for the databases. It's all kind of things. We're going to continue this conversation on Facebook Live. Um, we're going to take a quick break from on air. But again, if you're looking for something to do virtually, go to the library's Facebook page, go to their YouTube channel, go to the web page. They're all kind of neat and fun things to do. Access the database. Make sure you have a library card because right now no one's at the library um, to process those applications. So if you already have a library card, um, go ahead and sign up for some of these databases. Um, there's all kinds of things. Um, as she mentioned, Mango to learn like foreign languages. There's things to look up, testing, test prep. Anyway, we'll get into that when we get come back. Okay, I cannot find my word. Like my words are just like same. I don't know. I, I, I'm like I know that there are adjectives and like verbs that I should be using right now, but I can't think of any. <laughs> I haven't I really talked know. to humans in about I a week. Was... <laughs> I've just talked to I'm... animals. So I'm looking at the time. I'm trying to like okay, how can I say what I need to say in this time without running out? You know, it's like okay. I need to reset. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so do you want to do you want to hit Libby and Access 360 when we come back? Okay. Yes. And for those out there with us right now, you know we have Libby, which is um, our app to download eBooks and audiobooks. I have taken advantage of Libby since I've been home. Um, <laughs> and then um, Access 360 is um, children's books. And what I love about Access 360 is if you click on the audiobook version, it a lot of times has a like animated video to go along with it. I had no idea until I was oh. gonna my nephew listen to a, a storybook on my phone, and it had video with it, and it was like. So he got to like watch the book. That is awesome. Okay, so I have the app on my tablet. Um, Cause one day I might actually read a book for pleasure. I'm, I'm going to read a book for pleasure. Again, once I finish school again. <laughs> I don't know why I do this to myself, but here we are. <laughs> um, but I also see there are magazines yes, on here. I- that's something that I really love is that's something we added, I believe in the past year, but with the Arkansas Digital Library Consortium, you can check out magazines and, um, and like books where we may have one copy. Um, you can, there, you, more than one person can check out some of the magazines, but we have, you know, cooking magazines. And another thing, we have a cookbook book club. So anyone out there who likes to cook or learn new recipes, we are doing a, what we're calling cookbook book club and it is available on Facebook only it's a digital book club so you don't have to take time out of your day to read a specific book we just encourage you to um, check out a cookbook and what's great is you can do it digitally you can check a cookbook out through Libby you can check out a magazine like about cooking and then talk to us about a recipe you made there Um, I'm gonna make um, chicken parmesan today because I'm home and I, I can. <laughs> Make it at home can be so rewarding. Like once we, you know, you get your ingredients and you start doing all these hands-on things. I don't know. It's just, it kind of makes you not want to eat at a restaurant because like 
you know now what goes into it. It gives you pleasure in cooking, but I, I haven't time. been to a restaurant since about this time last year. I'll pick up takeout, yeah. but I don't go in places. Um, but the last time I made chicken parmesan, a tornado hit my neighborhood. So I have not made it. <laughs> um hold on. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're back with community conversation on Kelly K. 102.5 FM. My special guest is Brandy Office from the Craig County Johnson Public Library. Sorry, we sorry I had to cut you off real quick. Uh, we were talking about recipes and cookbooks and you know, making taking language. advantage of this new normal that we're in. <laughs> so go ahead and talk about that again. Recap so, on what you were saying. Um we have a cookbook book club. So anyone out there who likes to cook or um, even if you just like to eat, I love to eat. Um, we have Cookbook Book Club. It is a Facebook only group. Um, you can find it um, via our Facebook page or search for Cookbook Book Club. Um, okay. And it is, we share recipes and we talk about the books that we checked out from the library. And as Ms. Quabila pointed out, if you use Libby, which if you um, have a library card, you absolutely should be using Libby. It's um, ebooks, it's audiobooks, and it's magazines. So you could even check out a magazine um, for, through Libby and then talk to us on Cookbook Book Club, digital only um, book club, um, and there share a recipe that you made. Um, or talk to us about the magazine you checked out and a recipe that you found in it. So um, that's a resource, Libby. You can check out ebooks, audiobooks, magazines. I have listened to so much while I've been home. Um, I just finished a book that I have checked out three times because it is so long. But since I was home and could listen to hours on end, I was able to finish it. So um, Access 360 is another resource um, specifically targeted for children. It has um, storybooks. It has juvenile fiction, nonfiction. Um, there are some children's titles available through Libby, but there aren't as many. And so that's why we use Access 360. It's just a great, um, a great resource, especially if you're going to be um, at home. Sorry, my hair keeps falling. If you're going to be home um, waiting for the the snow to melt away and the ice layer under the snow to melt away um it's a, a wonderful opportunity to still have access to our collection and this gives you an opportunity to get away from the tv get away from the computer well i mean of course you're on a, a device but like you said there are audio versions of many of these books and so popping your headphones just kind of lay back sit back whatever the case and just let I really love, like, my first audiobook that I listened to was by Lewis Penny, and now I'm looking up, this particular author has multiple books in multiple collections, uh, or series, I should say, of, you know, their books, so it's like, now I want to go back and start with book number one, and, you know, just listen, because I love to hear the, the narrator read the book, because I use different voices sometimes. <laughs> They do. So. And so there's a, a book that I um, have been reading and they have two different actors um, playing the roles. Um, and that's what I love about audiobooks is I love it when there's a whole cast involved, you know, <laughs> and you can really, it's like, it's like listening to a movie. And in some books, the actual author is the narrator. So you just never know what you're going to get. It can be so much fun. Um, you know, I know this sounds crazy, but it kind of takes you back to the days before TV was really as popular as it is, and oh, people listen to the radio for their that. entertainment. You know, that's um, what uh, Orson Welles' War of the Worlds, that was a, a, a radio program. You know, yeah. so, uh, you know, uh, Burns and Allen, Gracie Burns and George Allen, uh, no, Gracie Allen, George Burns, yeah. So, so uh, they were radio folks. So radio was the golden age. Yes. So again, if you want to take a break, there's Libby, and then there's Access 360. Those are geared more toward the school age kids. Mm -hmm. um, but still, if you know, as an adult, you just want to free your mind, go for what you know. <laughs> I like to, you know, still watch cartoons every now and then. So why not listen to a children's book? I don't know. You may have little ones in your life. And you're trying to find some way to connect with them. Like there's the possibilities are endless. So just check both of them out, but have your library card so you can log in and save your 
Um, you can log in, uh, tag the book, or you can, you know, request it or whatever the case may be. So, okay. Uh, before we get to the end, uh, we have a few, you know, a couple minutes. Let's talk about music downloads. <laughs> Freegal is the free service that you can use to download free music. And when I say free music, it's it's not like Libby. I love Libby, but Libby, you can keep it for 14 days and then it automatically comes back to the library, whether you're finished or not. But what's great about it is if you're not finished and you put it on hold, it checks back out where you left off. So you don't have to remember what chapter you were on. But okay. Freakle is absolutely free. So it's anyone who's a Sony artist. And so just from my checkout or my downloads, Adele and Justin Timberlake are both Sony artists. <laughs> and so their music is going to be absolutely free. Carrie Underwood, Brad Paisley, I believe, are both um, Sony artists. And you can go on there and just search for different people. But Freakle um, allows you, with your library card, to download free music every week. You just put in your library card number and your PIN, which is the last four digits of your phone number. And then um, once you download it, it's yours. It's not going anywhere unless you decide to delete it. So there's an app, uh, F-R-E-E-G-A-L. Um, and you can do um, the downloads through our website, libraryinjonesboro.org. Click on the e-media tab and go down to the bottom of the page and click on um, Freegal. Um, I haven't downloaded the app again recently. Um, last time I used it, once you downloaded music, it was only available in the app. So my um, advice has always been use the real computer and download it there and then you can okay. upload it into your say iTunes and then have it on your phone oh okay. so it's just a couple extra steps but um there's always I, a workaround <laughs> there's a workaround so but it's you're still using the service the way it's intended um it's just a way to have it available on your phone and your computer instead of with the app it's just on your phone and it doesn't show up as your as a download on your computer what also about freakal um you can make playlists so um i like to use them you know back in the times when i got to go to events um which i look forward to being able to do again in the future um especially you know with you miss miss quibilla i hope we are able to have something in the future but i would um have a speaker and i would play a playlist off of freakal to advertise that service so oh, wow. um, if you're looking for music to exercise to, you can go on Freegal, put in your library card number, put in your pin and type in exercise under when you go to the playlists tab and it will pull the different lists that people have made. Wow. Okay. So there's so many, so many options available with Freegal. So again, um, the library has all these wonderful databases if you have a library card, you can access Ancestry.com through the library's database. Um, so if you don't have a library card, go ahead and fill one out. They're trying to open up today. They don't know for sure, but someone will, pro someone will be able to process your application within a few. Um, Maybe give us a week or so. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so we just got kicked off air. Like the way the time... I don't, I gotta, the way this timing works, <laughs> um, something to do, right, but anyway, we want to thank everybody for watching, for tuning in, this has been a Friday, a Monday, Friday, I don't know, it's, I don't know it's, what day it is, <laughs> it's what a day, we want to thank everybody for tuning in, for watching, don't forget to check out all of the databases uh, that the library has to offer, check out the events, most of them, of course, are virtual. Um, the library is trying to open back up, but, you know, stay tuned. We'll see. We're not trying to rush anybody to get out there on the snow. It's not worth it. No, stay <laughs> so, safe. So, but thank you so much, Brandy, for joining us today. And we'll be checking in hopefully next month. There'll be some more in-person, well, not in-person things, but some more kits for the kids and things of that nature. So thank you so very much. <laughs>